to Williamsport this Saturday morning. So happy to see each one of you here with us today. Um, this morning, uh, I just wanted to call your attention to uh, a couple of announcements in the bulletin. The first one um, is that um, we're still looking for some adults to be prayer pals with the younger uh, members of the church. And so uh, there's an announcement there to see Ms. Nash uh, for signing up for that so that we can get the last couple of children adopted that way. Um, also, I was noticing that the church board is meeting on August 27th at 7 p.m., so I wanted to call your attention to that. Um, and this afternoon, um, our church has the program at the Williamsport Retirement Village at 2.30, so I'll be headed over there, and if that's something that you're interested in, um, let me know at Potluck and we can get together on that. Um, that take care, takes care of all of our announcements. Um, Brother Jones had a word for us as well. Morning, everyone. Morning. God has been good, right? Eh? Um, Amen. I am extending continually an invitation to join us every third and fourth Sabbath afternoon at the lower level for Bible study. I can tell you that um, uh, we have been experiencing just wonderful times. The Lord through the Holy Spirit has been unveiling to us some truths that we just marvel over. We are excited. So, uh, as a good friend, as a brother, we would like to encourage you to join us. After lunch, 2 o'clock, we have a corner table way to the right. I go in south. You will uh, see us sitting over there and we always have a wonderful time. So you're invited. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks. So, Brother Jones, mentioning uh, the fellowship meal made me realize uh, that I wanted to say uh, congratulations to the Freemans on their 70th uh, wedding anniversary. Amen. And today um, there will be something special um, for them at the fellowship meal, so we will Amen. want to be there to celebrate that. All right, well, let's transition now and sing. Um, our opening hymn is number 181.
now time that we will pray together. And this morning, um, before we pray, I wanted to ask if you have a special request that's something silent that you would like to lift before God before we pray, you can raise your hand with me um, to acknowledge that. And um, we know that God hears each of our requests and our needs. And so now, Brother Jones will pray for us. Jesus, we come to you knowing that you are there. We believe your promises, we believe your words. We know they are true, they are alive, because they have quickened us this morning to come in your presence. So I'm asking you to accept us. We've done things during the course of the week that we are ashamed of. And we're sorry and we're asking you to forgive us. We realize that we cannot do it on our own. We've tried, I have tried so many times and I've failed. And uh, I just thank you that your words are there to remind me that I don't have to do it on my own. That I can trust you. I can lay all my cares and my burdens on your shoulders. Oh, hallelujah. And that you can take them. And, uh, and, and because I believe you, you can turn them into righteousness for me. Father, I, I just thank you for your words, because if it weren't for them, I don't know where I would be today. Amen. This world, this world, right now, it was prophesied. It's in chaos. Uh, it's a, in upheaval. There's so many things going on that are causing great concern among us. And some of us, even though we knew before what would happen, we never understood what it would be like. We're just wondering what is going on. What is going on? And so, Lord, I, I thank you for a, a refuge like this, a place like this. Oh, Lord, I thank you for an opportunity like this that we can come together, a people of one mind, thinking about you, that we can come to your rescue, and we can, we can, uh, uh, or you can come to a rescue and we, we can, we can be, be safe. We can be safe in your arms. Amen. But yet not forget about those on the outside who are struggling and are wondering what's going to happen. 
we can then reach back and hold them and, and comfort them and show them the way and then encourage them and let them know that there's a Savior who cares about them. And that we, they need to see you in us so that they can be assured. Lord, I beg you, change our hearts. Change the cold hearts that we express at times and, 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 and recreate us and restore us and give us liberty so that we may be set free and experience joy in our hearts. This church, you love it. You love this church, I know. Because you've sent a man of your own heart to lead us, to show us the way. May we uphold him, may we lift him up, may we hold his hands, may we support him so that the work can be lighter. And may you give him a vision so that we can follow. Father, I just ask these things and those who are sick, those who are struggling, those who need love, those who need care, those who need healing, Lord, may you let your hand be felt even today in this place. One of these days is my hope that when, uh, bef just before you come, we're going to see all the, the glories and the beauties of your promises where you'll heal and you'll bless and you'll change hearts. Many of us have loved ones that are out there that are undecided. Lord, you give us a promise that we don't have to lose hope. That one day we will see a change just before the doors are closed. And then we'll all rejoice to see you come. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
the story. And so, young people, um, please collect the money to support uh, the schools in the area, which have just started back to school this week. And, um, and we'll look forward to the story um, from this Ash.
Thank you for the opportunity that our church has to minister to the children. Thank you for all the adults who have worked hard to minister to the children. And we ask that you, you protect us as we move forward. Thank you so much for loving us. Amen. But Father, thank you for this wonderful privilege that we can bring the teachers to you. Father, that we can dedicate them for this coming school year. Some of them are parents that are homeschooling. We are also dedicating them to you. Your word tells us in Romans chapter 10, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher or then a teacher? How shall they teach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But Father, it's my prayer today that each teacher here would know that their duty is to uplift Jesus. And Father, they will present Jesus to these little ones and the older youth. And Father, they might follow in Jesus' footsteps. Bless them with wisdom. It's not always so easy to work with children. Give them the patience. And Father, we pray that they will be what you want them to be. Thank you for this blessing. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We do have a gift for the teachers right behind you where you're sitting. And for you kids, you can have a little box bag thing that's a little gift for you as well. Actually, I have a lot to have too. <laughs>
shop when I and David stepped into the church on Wednesday and we saw cables hanging here and all the cameras were gone. It was, it was not a, a nice experience. We thought we were going to have a prayer meeting as usual and then we really needed a prayer meeting. Um, I really, it was an amazing experience to hear the children pray. Um, they prayed whoever took the cameras that God may work in their hearts. Isn't that a nice yeah. prayer? Yeah. Um, I was really excited coming from South Africa that there will be no theft in the US. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very excited. You know, we're in a real rural setting, nothing will work, you know, nothing will disappear here. And there's no cameras, there's no alarm systems. No burglar bars, no fences. But we are not in heaven. I discovered this week. Wow. <laughs> but life is tough, isn't it? Life is not always easy, would you agree? Life is tough. And life presses us from all sides. Now, um, a few years back, a lady found me. It's a quite amazing story. I'll maybe share that with you someday. How she discovered the TV ministry we had in South Africa, and how she accepted the truth by the preaching of the Word. And she, said, she told me her favorite program was my wife's cooking program. And she learned how to cook healthy, etc. And so she learned how to use a pressure cooker. And she cooked some beans within the pressure cooker. And she was busy the one day, she was watching the cooking show, she was busy with a pot, and there was beans inside, and something told her, quickly go to your room to fetch something. And as she went to her room, a massive explosion happened. And it was beans all over the house. <laughs> and she told me, if I didn't listen to the Spirit at that very moment, I would maybe be dead. But that, that led me to think, a pressure cooker. You know, sometimes life is like a pressure cooker. Are you with me? And what do we see with life? Life is like a pressure cooker pressing us down and we feel sometimes as if we're going to explode. Isn't that true? 